All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to more 428 Shibuya Scramble. My name is Raven from the Sky, and let's do this. Before the news was shared with the Osawas, the members of the investigation team quietly briefed Detective Kajiwara. Osawa and I, or AI, I, I call her AI, I, I don't know, I guess it's I or A, I, -E, sat, <laughs> sat on the sofa on the far side of the room watching. They could see Kajiwara go pale. He wiped the sweat from his forehead with a handkerchief several times. Bad news, Osawa thought. Mr. Osawa, ma'am. Kajiwara shuffled his way over to them at last. We've just gotten word from headquarters. Right now, the task force is in an uproar after change and direction from the higher ups. The detectives who were on scene have been ordered to discontinue the kidnapping investi investigation. Right? Don't need to switch. We already know that. He hesitated ominous, ominously. I saw him brace himself. Please, let's hear it. It was seen that your daughter Maria is safe. What? I saw I felt an unexpected surge of relief. You mean it? The case has been solved. Added I, I. For a moment, they almost sounded like a happily married couple. It was only the stern look on Kajuara's face that gave them pause. However, as of yet, we do not have her in custody. I'm not sure I understand, Osawa said. You know she's alive, but you don't have her? How? Deep furrows appeared in Kajiwara's forehead. I'm sorry, sir. The information we've received from up top is complicated. We've confirmed that she was able to escape confinement. It's just the detectives gave every appearance of holding something back. If there's something you need to tell us, then just say it, Osawa told him. It would seem that Maria has been infected with the virus. Infected? Osawa felt as if a taloned claw had just clutched his heart. It's not one of I've ever heard of before, but apparently it's called the UA virus. Saw his vision went dark. He felt as if he'd plunged into a black void of despair. Darling? I asked raspingly. She didn't need to put her fears into words. Osawa felt them just as plainly in his own gut. You're an expert on virology. Virology, aren't you, Mr. Osawa? Kajara said. Are you familiar with this UA virus? Osawa held up a hand to forestall further questions. There was no time for that. How many hours ago was she infected? He demanded. I wasn't told that much. Is that important to know, sir? Depending on when Mar Maria was affected, we may or may not still be. Saw trailed off abruptly as the reality of the situation struck home. This wasn't the same as when Hitomi had been infected. Right now, there was no way of getting Tanaka's cooperation, which meant there was no way of accessing the antiviral storage. In other words, Getting the cure to Maria would be impossible. Osawa's head swam. Detective Kajiwara, I beg of you. Your people need to catch Tanaka as soon as possible. I can't share the details, but if you don't, something terrible is going to happen. Just then, Kajiwara's cell phone rang. He picked up quickly. W what did you say? The detective's shout shattered the anxious silence that had fallen. I shuddered visibly at the outburst. Kajra nodded sharply, still listening. More creases formed in his forehead. Understood. I'll let them know. He hung up. All eyes were on him. 
That was headquarters. Osawa swallowed the lump in his throat. He could feel himself quaking all over. A minivan we believe belonged to the syndicate exploded near Jinan and Shibuya. A body was found amongst the burning wreckage of the vehicle. Who was it? Osawa interjected. Tell me! Please don't let it be Maria. Please don't let it be Hitomi. Kaidra took a breath before speaking. We've conclusively identified the remains as Mr. Tanaka's. Oh my god. No! The cry was visceral, almost bird like. Saw looked around in surprise. It was I. It's not true. You're lying. Her shrill screams reverberated through the room. Saw felt like he wanted to scream too. But Tanaka did. There was no way to get to the antivirus. Which meant that Maria was going to die. Oh my god, the plot thickens. Now what? How? There's got to be another way. There's got to be. I got it. Eventually, I muster up the energy to start walking around town, heading nowhere in particular. The billboard outside of the department store displays a poster of some female musician. She must be pretty popular because lots of passerby are Stop to take a good look. I catch sight of a little, of little Hannah in front of the billboard. Oh, that's the chick that uh, Sawa's fond of, fan of. She's showing something to a woman that there, some colorful sheets of paper. Hmm. The woman looks a lot like the musician in the poster. Moreover, I have the feeling I've seen her someplace before. Where could I have seen her? Man, having amnesia is really a pain in the ass. I have no way of knowing whether I've forgotten something or had no memory of it in the first place. The woman looks through the papers Hannah held out to her, nodding approvingly at each one, and I can hear her murmur with admiration. Hannah! 
I wave as I scamper on over to her. As I do, the woman abruptly hurries off. Hey, we meet again, I say. Hannah just gives me a bored look. Who was that just now? I ask. I don't know. Hannah quickly gathers up her belongings and starts walking briskly away. Oh, hey, wait up, I call out. The girl ignores me. She's moving at a jog now, heading from Spanish Hill towards Coindori. <laughs> Whoop! Ah! As she steps out into Coindori, she trips and falls down hard. The contents of her bag spill out on the road. Oh, whoops. Catching up to her, I gather up some of her fallen pages. What's this? There are poems written in the colored paper. Copies of a prose poem titled The False Monsoon. The poem delicately details the wavering emotions of an adolescent girl. Also, the clever twist of the text. If the text is read horizontally instead of vertically, it tells about a father's worries over his only daughter who is now of marriageable age. Hannah's genius will soon be discovered by Ay Ayaka Miki when she will go on to become a popular songwriter. A look of embarrassment crosses Hannah's face. As she snatches the pages out of my hands. Don't touch those. Those are for sale. For sale? I'm selling poems that I wrote. Oh wow, that's incredible. She looks surprised by the compliment. Incredible? My friends at school said they were dumb. Oh boy, she's going through that, huh? That's not true. I only saw a little just now, but I thought it was a really good poem. You're just saying that. I've been out here in Shibuya for weeks trying to sell these, but the only person who's bought one was that lady just now. Hannah lets out a mournful sigh. What are you out here selling poems for anyway? I thought maybe it'd help pay back our debts, huh? Okay, that's not something I'd expect to hear from a little kid. My dad's in real deep, she continues. The topic makes me think of Mr. Nagashita. Guess today is my day for meeting people married, married in debt. And I'm the only elementary school. I'm only in elementary school, so I can't get a part-time job. Japan's Labor Standards Act prohibits the hiring of children under the age of 15. Same here. Oh wait, I think it's 15 or 14 here in America. I think it's been so long. I can't remember. Correct me if I'm wrong. For, for certain jobs, yeah, within the entertainment industry, I think you can. Yeah, same here especially in the entertainment industry. However, employers can obtain permission from the Labor Standards Inspection Office for younger children to work. I'm impressed. She's so brave. She's maybe a little hard to approach, but she is, she is just a kid after all.
She's so brave, I just want to give her a hug. She is. She's braver than most adults. Talking about her, her classmates talking about it was dumb. It ain't dumb. What are they doing? Sitting at home playing Fortnite? She's out trying to generate revenue at 10. You got adults that aren't even doing that. Sitting at home playing COD and, and, and Fortnite and whatever else instead of generating revenue when they need to get a job. Nothing wrong with, you know, I don't want to go off too much of topic of this walkthrough, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing what you love to do. Of course, I want to generate revenue from gaming. There's nothing wrong with that. There's something wrong with if you're lazy not doing anything in life. Those are the, I bet you those are the type of people that told her that it was stupid. I hear a strange wailing call from behind me. She just, just keep doing what you're doing, Hannah. Startled, I turn around to see Mr. Toyama standing there. Tears streaming from his eyes. <laughs> Hannah? I'm so sorry. I had no idea you were trying so hard to. Oh, he was there the whole time he heard the story. Toyama rushes up to the girl. Yeah, she, you know, that, that's one of a kind. Because I, I was, I was part of the not doing crap either. Sitting in front of the TV playing Sega Genesis when I was hurt. <laughs> and PlayStation 1, y'all remember that? I wasn't doing jack crap. Shoot, kids like her a dime a dozen. It's quite the emotional father-daughter reunion. I wouldn't even... What else? Well, I wouldn't even selling candy or lemonade. Ooh. Or at least that's how it looks until Hannah slaps her father across the face with a bundle of papers. What, what was that for? Don't you give me that. I'm sick of all this running around. There were several more well-placed smacks with the little craft project. Okay, okay, Toyama says at last. I know you're upset, but I have to ask you for just one thing. Then we can see about getting through the day, yeah? Okay, but just one. can't help but find this ornery interaction kind of charming. You two get along really well, don't you? I say. Yep. Nope. <laughs> the two give simultaneous contradictory replies. suddenly starts to walk off with Toyama tottering after her. Such a weird little sight that I can't help but laugh. Well, later then, 